So today we'll discuss about evaluating a business based on the industry. So does the business operate in a good or a bad industry? Investing in the right industry is very important because the large rate of your potential rate of return is often attributed to the industry you are invested. For example, if you invest today in internet sales companies, right, due to the growth of this industry, even if you invest in smaller companies, you there's a high chance you will do well. There are also you know, examples of investing in 5G, right? And blockchain companies as well. So you need to calculate the range of industry ROIC, that is the return on invested capital. I've covered this in my previous video, so please watch that if you do not understand the meaning of this term. So basically, pharmaceutical industries, for example, have an ROIC of between 13 to 21 percent over the last 10 years. So the point I'm trying to make here is the best pharmaceutical industry is not far from the worst. So, you know, it, it, you don't have to invest in, in the best. You could invest in a small cap, basically. And there's a high chance that that company will do well as well. And another example is oil companies, uh, you know, which has an ROC, ROIC of between 3 to 15%. So the bottom line is finding the right industry is what counts. If you pick up a stock from an industry growing between five to 8% a year, even if you do not identify a good stock, the chances of your stock doing well are pretty high. But you need to do the hard work. You need to research. You need to understand the following. You need to know what drives the industry? How do people compete within this industry? What is the larger macro picture? What are the industry trends, especially for cyclical industries? What is the average cash conversion cycle for this industry? If the if it is positive, that is in a positive cash conversion cycle, the company does an excellent job of collecting accounts receivables. So, you know, it's a, it's a green flag. Then what is the industry's exposure to cyclical periods? Now, what are cyclical periods? What happens in cyclical periods is normally revenues are higher in periods of economic prosperity and they are lower in periods of downturn. Now, next point is, does the company have the ability to pass on the price increases to the customers? Now, if you look at this point, not all industries can pass on prices to the customers, that is the increase in price to the customer. Only those companies which have monopoly or they have a brand or they have superior quality products. So for example, brand, you know, could be, the, you know, the haagen ice cream. You know, they have a big brand and they have superior quality as well. And then the same with Apple, you know, irrespective of the price of iPhone or iPad, people are going to buy it because it's got a brand and it's got a far superior quality than the nearest competitor. And then we also need to evaluate what is the volatility of demand from the customer. Highly volatile demand is not good for businesses and I wouldn't invest in such businesses. Now, okay, we got a lot in the theory out here. I mean, you need to research each of these points like, you know, what drives industry? How do people compete with industry? What is the larger macro picture? What are the industry trends? What is the average cash conversion cycle for this industry? What is the industry exposure to cyclical periods? And then these last two points. Now, like what are the, does the industry have the ability to pass on the price increases and what is the volatility of demand? So you can easily get this, you know, if you Google, you'll get all these, uh, you know, use any search engine and you'll get these 
you know you can research on this this is very important you know especially when you're talking about competition now i'll just give you an example you know after the second world war in the us and other developed countries you know example was freezers the business of freezers manufacturing freezers you know deep freezers okay so imagine you were evaluating a company in the early 1950s and you 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 were evaluating whether freezers is a, you know buying a business is good or not so let's assume that we were evaluating at that time so then uh, you know the conclusion here is uh, rather uh, what we we what we could find is that the basically the underlying demand was strong as the women enter the workforce frozen foods the frozen foods were large part of the diets the quantity of frozen foods in the supermarkets increased dramatically frozen food manufacturers chose warehouses based on service real time links to inventory good temperature control quality on time delivery rather than price however they were barriers to entry by capital as the capital expenses were high also special expertise were required for staff engineers to handle dangerous equipment the ebitda margins that is the earnings before interest taxation depreciation and amortization the these margins exceeded 36% once a refrigerator warehouse was built this was excellent point right such high margins basically you know your net margins are pretty high and of course they could claim a lot of depreciation as well because of capital intensive industry and another good point was the average cash conversion cycle was 120 days so refrigerated warehouses could grow without a lot of borrowed cash i repeat since the cash conversion cycle was good they didn't need to take massive loans So these were my thoughts on evaluating a stock based on industry. I hope you found this video, you know, you like this video, you found it informative, and I hope you can apply all this knowledge while evaluating your company. So thanks for your time. If you like the contents of this video, please support my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.